Huge thanks to Greg and the entire team at Winslow BMW in Colorado Springs for letting me review this M2. If you're in the market for a new or used BMW in the Colorado area, make sure you check them out at winslowbmw.com or click the link down in the description. Well, here it is, guys. Finally, I get to get my hands on the new BMW M2. I've been wanting to see this in real life ever since I saw the first pictures because I know pictures usually don't do a car justice and this as i said in my rs3 versus m3 video about five months ago or something like that this has been growing on me slowly over time the more i see it specifically in toronto red which is my favorite color for this i think it's starting to look really cool and good the first impression was a little bit of a shock when you saw the differences in design language for specifically the front end to the pre-generation previous M2. A lot more boxy, a lot more industrial, while the old one felt organic and fluid. Still has some automotive design in this design. So it's not a product design. I'm really happy to say that because we're gonna have a look at the front side and rear and I can't wait to show you around this car and all the small design details. Let's start with the front end of the new M2. This to me looks like a pretty traditional front end of the of a BMW. We don't have oversized kidneys in the M2, but at the same time, if you compare this to the previous generation M2, I think we have to look at it not as an um, evolution of that design, but more like a reset of BMW's design philosophy. Because this to me, compared to the previous M2, which was organic and fluid and had very much emotions in the lines, this feels a little bit more industrial and squared off all around the car and almost like they took a DTM car and managed to put that into a production car. Let's have a look at every single design graphic feature in the front end. I think what people talk the most about are these, the squared off lower part side intakes in the corners. To me, yes, they do look a lot more industrial, but also purposeful. And I think this actually works because as I'm gonna show you in the side and the rear, this design language or philosophy that we have in the front end with very squarish features, it actually follows a along to the side, which we're gonna have a look at the fenders, which I absolutely love. And then you have the same kind of treatment that we have here. You also have that in the back of the car. So overall, at least they took the, the same kind of style that we have in the front and applied it to the entire car. And looking at the, the kidneys here, I really like this integration of the kidneys because as I said, these feel like more naturally sized kidneys. There are a couple of changes I would like to make to the kidneys. I'm gonna talk about those in just a minute. Then we have one single headlight bulb in the headlight itself. Usually we have two, but this is sort of an homage to the BMW 2000. 2002, which also had one single or two single round headlights in the front end. A detail that I think would help this design if it was added to the front end, redesigning this part down here. So what I would like to do to this area down here is to have one single piece of sort of a lip spoiler at the lower part that is in the same body color as the car. I think that would create more of a nice foundation for all the graphics to build upon. Now, when we have it like this, it feels like these areas here, they kind of hang off the sides and it doesn't have a structure underneath it. So I would just add a simple lip down here in the same blue color that we have on the rest of the body. And I think that would create a solid base for the entire front end. Coming back to these kidneys right here, one detail that I would like to change here is to have these slots I would like to have them be vertical instead of horizontal. I kind of like the horizontal uh, view of this where they have them three slots, one here and two and three. It extends or stretches the grills out in a horizontal way and making it wider. But still, since they are pretty wide, the outline of the grill itself, I want to see what it would look like having them just be uh, vertical instead. And looking at the outline of these grills, it feels a little naked to me, not having any sort of trim around the kidneys itself. Usually we have some black piece down here or some silver piece on previous BMWs and even on current BMWs. But here, it just goes from body color straight into this gloss black. It looks cool because again, I think BMW is trying something new here and I really appreciate that. And the thing I like with the M2 is when I see it in real life, it definitely looks a whole lot better than when I first saw it in pictures. You also have this beautiful chamfer housing the kidney. So at least we have that, even though we don't have a specific separate trim piece going on the kidneys, it's still framed in a pretty nice way. Then you have the 50th anniversary logo up here and you have 
the M bulge on the hood that we had in the E46 M3. You also had it in the previous M2. This has also been a little bit squared off and I think that's also attention to detail because you can't have a smooth fluid bulge when everything else around the car is very square. All right, so having a look at the side view, I think this is also a topic of discussion looking at the fender specifically, but I'm gonna say it again. I think the fenders look super cool on this because we have the same treatment in the front and in the rear, this squared off feeling of the entire design. We still have a nice sharp shoulder line that starts in this area and then goes all the way and kind of fades into this fender right here. You can see just how wide these fenders are. It almost looks like a, a wide body kit that has been some, in some way implemented for production cars and fused into the body of the car. And that's what you want in an M car. You want something crazy. You want something new when it comes to design and aggressive. I love how this line is very squared off in the rear and you can see the sun hitting right here and coming down here and going into this line at the bottom. Very beautifully done and it adds to the sportiness of this car. When I first saw this on photos, one thing I thought looked a little off in the proportions where they thought the length of the hood looked a little too long in relation to the rest of the body. But then when you do some car design analysis on this and you look at the angle of the A-pillar, you can see that everything is still intact. We have the angle here for the A-pillar going straight in to the center of the front axle, exactly like we want in a good proportioned car. And we also have the Hofmeister kink intact right over here, which I'm glad to see because this is not there on the M4, for example. And then we have the big black wheels here. Usually I'm not a fan of black wheels. In this case too, I think, because you can't really see the design of the wheel itself. But we have 285s in the rear, 20s, and we have two 75s in the front. So beefy tires both front and back. However, these are 19s. In the back we have 20s, so we have a staggered setup. Overall, my favorite view of the new M2 is gonna have to be the side view because I love the proportions of this thing. I'm a huge fan of this wide body integration and you also have a very interesting old school flush door handle here, which has this carvation out for it so you can put your fingers down here. And this specific M2 right here also comes with the beautiful carbon fiber roofs, which saves a little bit of weight, maybe brings down the center of gravity by a couple of pounds, but most of all, it looks very cool. Coming around to the back view of the new M2, and this is probably where I had the most things that I would like to change and maybe redesign just a little bit in the rear end. Mostly it has to do with these taillights. We have the same kind of treatment here in the taillights that we have in the front. So one single LED with basically the same thickness, it adds a little bit of a static look to it. But then when I think about it again, the static look is all over this car. So I'm not sure if adding some more dynamic headlights to the rear would actually help this design. But what I would like to do is you see this mass here. I think this mass is too high in relation to the position of the taillights. So I would like to move the taillights up just a little bit and then stretch them out and also do something with this lower part integration. I love this proper M car integration of the diffuser with a big bazooka quad tailpipes in the bottom. But I think the integration of the, of the diffuser itself, it could have been done a little smoother and still retaining this boxy shape of the design. For example, this corner here feels a little too, too sharp for me. It feels like the diffuser was just crammed in there and doesn't really have the space to breathe. So what I would like to do is just cut this corner and have more of a smoother integration, still have it be a straight line going down here. And details like that, I think would add a little bit more of dynamic feeling to the BMW M2 than what we have right now, but it's still a very unique looking design and I think it kind of suits the overall car to have this unique features and proportions because we have it again all around the rest of the car. A couple of details that I love here is that we still have the M spoiler. However, I wish this up top, the little lip up here would be in carbon fiber. And I also like these integrations of the big squares in the back. Because if you're gonna do it on one side of the car, you better do this integration on the rest of the car as well. And that's exactly what's going on here. You have the re reverse camera situated right here, which I think is a cool location. And look at this, we have some line flow in the LEDs going from the LED right here. And then this cuts in, it goes in the same line as this cut line that we have right under, right in the middle of the trunk and under, uh, underneath the M2 badge. So we have some line flow going on here. But other than that, line flow is not really what this car is about. Not in the same way as the old M2, the previous M2, which was just beautiful and organic. This feels, again, more industrial all around. Welcome to the interior of the brand new BMW M2. What I like about this interior, I like pretty much 
everything that goes on in here. We don't have the carbon fiber seats in this specific M2. I do prefer, I think I actually prefer these because these are super comfy, easy to get in and out of. We have some materials that you can explore with your hands, with the feeling and your eyes, different textures, different graphic features. There's just one thing that I would like to change in the interior of the M2 and I think you know what that is. That is this big screen that feels uh, not as well integrated as it did in the XM where you have the similar screen but it did have a housing, carbon fiber housing for it. Here we can even see the brackets in the back and this is stuff that I don't want to see in the interior. I don't want to see hardware like this like we had up here behind this. I think this could have been integrated in a bit smoother way. But other than that, the graphics look super nice. I'm a little bit worried about glare when it's sunny outside, when the sun hits the screen directly. How much is that going to affect the contrast of the car? But we do have visible vents very traditional looking old vent and we have some buttons for the stereo and the radio control the volume but if you want to adjust the uh, climate control you're gonna have to go into a pretty non-intuitive design right here so let's fire it up real quick let's put let's put the engine in sport plus you can hear the, the difference there between the exhaust efficient <laughs> and Sport Plus. A lot more aggressive chassis, put that in Sport Plus. We have the steering Sport, brake Sport. Let's see how we go into the uh, climate control here. This still requires you to figure out, see exactly where you're hitting on the screen. And imagine doing that while you're driving. It's a lot more harder to do that than to just feel your way to where the controls are down here. But I guess that's where we're headed in today's uh, car interiors. So here you can change, you can either use a touch screen here or you can use this dial at the bottom to change whatever you want. And I guess in that sense, you still have some sort of physical button for the climate control if you're using this dial right here in the center console. I love these graphics that we have on the side, these M fractured graphics that we have in the side doors. Looks really cool. I also like these M colors that we have on the seat. It goes from dark blue to red to light blue with very colorful splashes on the seats themselves and the seat belts they also have this M stitching on the side so it's not a red or blue full color seat belt I think this is more classy to have it just subtle in the side of the seat belt with the M stitching and that then transfers into the steering wheel as well you have the M stitching all around the steering wheel and the inside of the steering wheel with the M badge down here at the bottom so looking more on this steering wheel I like the feel of this this is a typical thick M sh small steering wheel exactly what I want to see in an M car you have the configurable M1 and M2 buttons with the paddles in the back and of course it's a three spoke design with the controls for the radio on the right spoke and the controls for the cruise control is situated right here on the left since this has the carbon fiber roof which is an option I would pick because I don't care about sunroofs you don't get a sunroof because they're not going to cut it open in the carbon fiber itself so you get a carbon fiber roof, but you're gonna have to ditch the sunroof if that's an option you go for. Underneath here, you have two cup holders, pretty large size, and you have some storage space right here in the middle as well. In addition to a pretty regular sized glove box. All right, guys, let's take the new BMW M2 for a drive and let's see what this is all about. It feels very small. I love that. The footprint of this is just a little bit uh, larger than the E46 M3 and that's what you want as well in an M2. It, of course, they've grown over time so an M2 is now the size of an old M3 but still the old M3 wasn't a big car and this feels super nimble around the corner. Oh, that shifter is so quick. It's not a dual clutch but it's still super fast in between the shift. But it just goes. We have 453 horsepower under the hood, about 406 pound-feet of torque or something like that. It is the same engine as you have in the um, M3 and M2, M3 and M4, but it's been detuned a little bit. And having it in Sport Plus and everything, it stiffens everything up and specifically it makes the exhaust sound so good. Zero to 60 with the automatic is 3.9 seconds while you have it in the manual. It's gonna take a little bit longer and it goes in around 4.1 seconds. The top speed is not limited usually like we have in normal uh, German cars. This is not limited. So you have 177 miles per hour 
top speed of the M2. Oh, it feels so good, this gearbox. So think about this, what you're paying for this, a base price of $63,000 or something like that, I think that's a really good deal for what you get because you can get this with a manual, you can't get the manual in the Audi S3s for example, and the Audi S3 is all wheel drive, this comes as a rear wheel drive only. Overall, I think it's a very special car and again, I'm glad that BMW M they stuck to their roots here, specifically with the drivetrain, with the manual transmission and the inline uh, six three liter that we have up front, and didn't go down the same route that we see a lot of other manufacturers, for example, Mercedes with the AMGs, turning into four cylinders with a twin turbo and stuff like that, still with a lot of power, but you can't really replace displacement of an engine. And I think if you have an M2, this is the perfect car to still have the inline six in, like we had in all the other M3s up until this point, except for the E90 with at a V8. You know, if I were to buy this car, I'm not sure if I would pick the uh, manual or the automatic, because the automatic is so good in this car. It feels like it's the car was built to around this transmission. It feels like a really good fit with the rest of the powertrain. And it's also quicker, but still, I also want to support the manuals that are still left in, in production. So that would be a very hard choice to go with either the manual or the, or the uh, automatic. Let me know which one you would pick if you were to buy this and also which color you would pick. Personally, I would definitely go for the Toronto Red.